In this edition of BizWatch, China issues its five-year plan for energy conservation and the reduction of pollution. Overseas department stores, their strategy for survival as local retailers step up the competition. And the evolving trends in the way overseas clothing brands address the China market. Principles on how the stores or the concession needs to be laid out, how the clothes need to be. Hello and welcome to this edition of BizWatch. I'm Qin Yi. First, let's have a recap of major business news in China. The State Council has released a five-year general work plan for energy conservation and pollutant discharge reduction. By 2010, China will cut energy consumption per unit of GDP by 20 percent and reduce major pollutant discharges by 10 percent. A few tax will be introduced and an environmental tax is also under consideration. The Ministry of Commerce has forecast that China's retail sales will increase 14 percent to 8.7 trillion yuan in 2007. There will be active spending on personal development, recreation and entertainment, as well as housing, cars and jewelry. In 2006, China's retail sales grew by 13.7 percent year-on-year to 7.6 trillion yuan. Looking at consumer prices, the National Bureau of Statistics said the average price of pork in major cities climbed 10.5 percent in May. Economists predict that the continuous price hike for pork may push the rise in the consumer price index above 4 percent in May. A report by Goldman Sachs says China's CPI rose by 3.3 percent in March and 3 percent in April. The inflation alarm level is set by China's central bank at 3 percent. And still to come on BizWatch, the rise of overseas department stores, but what will it take for them to find success here? In this week's highlight, we take a look at what it takes for overseas department stores to thrive in the China market. We'll also talk to an analyst about the relationship between overseas clothing brands and their local agents. As we just said, the latest forecast for China's retail sales growth show great potential. Department stores are predicted to see compound growth of 14 percent between now and 2010, with overseas funded stores in particular enjoying rapid growth. This week's Hydra finds out what it takes for an overseas department store to thrive in the local market. A recent report shows that by 2010, department store's share of the retail market in China will increase from the current 10% to 17%, while the share of the supermarkets and the independent retailers will diminish. Overseas department stores currently contribute more than 20% of the total sales turnover in Shanghai, and their positioning at the higher end of the market is their lead strategy. We arrived in China in 2004 and primarily chose Shanghai for the high-quality lifestyle. Shanghai is the most attractive market for retailing in China, and people in the city have large demand for brands and luxury goods. Their second major strategy is to continually create interest by introducing sought-after brands that are new to China and that are not available in domestic stores, and which will enhance the reputation of the store. They have uh, you know, a long-term relationship in other markets with all those uh, leading premium products providers. So um, you know, it's to their advantage to bring those brands into China, which is fresh in Chinese market, can attract some eyeballs at least. So the introduction of which brand into their department store has to be aligned with their overall strategy. We have a large group of buyers who closely observe market trends, and we regularly restructure our product portfolio for local customers. So that's why you can continuously see new and unique brands in our stores. However, not all overseas department stores have fared well here. The former owner of the department store behind me was struggling with its sales for six years before it quit at the end of last year, despite its prime downtown location. The operation model was its downfall. Some department stores play the role of intermediate buyer for the merchandise they sell. They choose the brands and pay for products first, before selling on to their own customers. This model is quite popular worldwide. 
but it relies on building customers' loyalty to the store. You have to have a very unique and distinguished value proposition to your customers. To achieve that, you know, you need to make them want to purchase the products you offer. But that will take lots of marketing education and takes a lot of work for consumer education and marketing to make your consumers aware of those products. According to industry experts, the most successful model in China is for department stores to act as local agents for foreign brands, providing the retail space and charging rent, which can be as much as 40% of the revenue generated. This solution delivers flexibility as well as a more certain path to profits. Tai Jue for BizWatch.